you can see why we call it the old farmhouse. There you go. Well, this is the room I, I was sleeping in during the summer, but I'm not staying in there anymore. There's no windows that open, and the only one that does is uh, just about to fall out. I'm not complaining, because I've got the houseboat, and I've been sleeping on that, but it's just too cold now to sleep inside this place, plus the roof is leaking. I stayed there last night, but I have been on the houseboat for the last six nights other than that, and it's been nice and comfortable and warm. Last night was cold. Right, let's walk dogs. Let's see if Mikhail is awake. You awake, Mikhail? He's awake. What's happening, man? You in bed still? Okay, you're in bed, I'll leave you. Yeah, I'm just taking dogs for walk. G'day, mate, how you going? G'day. G'day. There you go, mate. Where you going? Pace. Let's see if we can get this right. Stay. Stay. Sit. Sit. No, that's not a sit. Sit. Pace, get back up. Pace, up. Pace, up. Pace, sit. Good boy. Good boy. Where you going? Jeez, that took forever. He is a type personality. That means he's like crazy. Hypo all the time. To the point that it's actually not good for him because he gets himself in the shit. Those little dogs are like little kamikaze pirates. Eventually something goes wrong and they end up dead. They either get run over or they get killed by a pig when they're hunting. He's got so many prongs in him. Probably the best thing out of this whole lockdown is he won't get killed this winter because the way he was hunting he was just going to get himself iced. So the farmer that's uh, using my bit of paddock came and took all his sheep away yesterday and uh, I wasn't here, I was down the houseboat putting a new battery in and he didn't have the courtesy to ring me he's taken all the sheep, luckily he didn't take my two sheep but uh, you know, you'd think it'd be nice just to give someone a phone call and say hey mate I'm coming on your land good dog, good boy you're a good girl too Poe, you sure are that sounds like the farm dog Sounds like he's back again. I think Poe is coming into heat. This pace is uh, paying a lot of attention to her back end. Last time he paid attention to her back end, this happened. Eleven of these little pups. Probably the best pups that have ever been bred by uh, Poe. That well, it's actually her first litter, but it's the best litter I've ever ever had bred here on the farm. Little beast tail going all the time because he can smell rabbit. He's so prey driven towards rabbit. That's part of his breeding, really. Out of those two dogs, B is actually the superior dog. He's never had himself ripped. Whereas old Pace there. He's had himself tuned up quite a bit. They're sight dogs as much as scenting dogs, although these guys are a mix. A little bit of Whippet, a bit of Terrier, a bit of Jack Russell, a bit of working dog. We don't really know what Wade Waller breeds into them, but they've got all sorts of stuff there. Went pretty good as a pig dog. Pixie come! Oh, he's a good dog, that dog. One command, and here he is straight away. Look at that. He's so sharp. He'll get lots of praise right now. Pixie come! Good boy! Good boy, here I am, mate. You're a good boy, aren't you? Good dog. You are responsive, you are quick. Geez, Pace could learn a thing or two from you, couldn't he, eh? Yeah, mate, talking about you, Pace. Pace gum. Yeah, that's a good boy. You scratch your nose, eh? What happened there? Yes, you're a good girl too, bro. Good dog. B come. Good dog. B come. Good boy. That's a good boy. Okay, where you go?
who can spot the rabbit in the grass. Yeah, buddy. I'll give you a clue. It's about uh, centre of the screen moving now. You've seen it, eh? Looks like some native uh, ducks mixing with some mallards down there and some pukekos. And I guess the question is for a lot of duck shooters this year is will we be allowed to go duck shooting? <coughs> he just hit the bull fence. Oh well, there's a lesson. Every dog's got to learn on the farm. He's still crying all the way home. He's running away from it. He's still going. Oh, poor wee man. He's gonna go all the way home. He just got the old shock and the bull fence, I can tell you, bloody hurts. Ah, not good. He got zapped right on the head on the bull fence and he's just run all the way home. I've told him so many times stay and he's actually a really good dog but the good thing there is that I wasn't saying anything so he won't connect it with me and lose trust in me but he probably won't want to come up here again and probably won't go near the fence either oh not ideal the other dogs are all looking yeah we know what happens keep away from that that's the problem with uh, having a farm with electric fence it's got to keep animals in but I don't like seeing my little man get smacked over like that you can't go all the way back to the house. Poor Pixie. Morning, ladies. How you doing? Hmm? They creamy. Get nice and fat for us, aren't you, eh? And you're gonna get yourself tangled around there, aren't you? And go around and around and around it. And they'll untangle you. Right, we need to make that shorter. We'll come back to you later, mate. That one can wander around with the train. The chain just loose like that. Did I say train? Chain. Yep. He'll hang by his mate there. As long as he doesn't get tangled up with his mate. Hey Big Z, you okay mate? Hey, hey boy, that wasn't very good, was it, eh? Hey, mate, you're wagging his tail. Hopefully he's forgotten what it's all about, but hasn't forgotten that there's a fence not to go up to next time. Good boy. Seems happy enough. Hey, bro. Morning. Big C hit the ball fence, and he was like, he got, like, really bad he's at, and he was like, arr, 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 all the way back to the farm here. Farmhouse, yeah. Yeah, I saw him run back, yeah. Oh. You right, Bixie? Yeah, he's okay now, but he wasn't happy. Hard lesson. Oh, yeah. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. good. Good sleep? Yeah. Cool. Nice and warm in here, eh? It's actually mm. toasty warm. It's insulated. It's actually much warmer than the house. A lot warmer here. Yeah. It was good for Dayla, because you've got the fire in the corner over there. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll gather some pine cones and stuff today, so you get a bit of wood, because it's getting cold now, eh? A tiny little dusting of snow on the Mount Arthur there, not much, but just a tiny little dusting. Well, it's actually gone now, it was here yesterday. Oh, it's covered in clouds, you can't see. Morning, ducky. Good morning. Big camp. Good boy, Beat. How many of those are pumping out each morning? 50? Uh, this is uh, uneven training. Okay, <laughs> uneven training, right? Eh? This is um, for your balance and your core as well. We've got more weight on the left hand side than on the right. So, not only are you going to be working your legs, you're going to be working your core and balance as well. Okay, that's a heavy bucket of dirt. So, easy bucket, heavy bucket. Also, see, this is touching the ground. So you probably want a smaller bucket so you can go all the way down without it. Or you could lift this up and work on that bicep at the same time. You could. Making up exercises as we go. Now it's a shoulder exercise. 
Do you think that these um, things that are uneven are more natural to our bodies for exercise? Yeah, most of the time when we're doing stuff, we're not perfectly evening out the weights that we're doing stuff with. Well, I just think of hunting, you know, when you're in the hills with a pig on your back, it's all undulating land and that, and it's up and down, and guys that hunt a lot are bloody fit and bloody strong because of that. If that's all you do, that will be all you need to do, but a lot of people don't hunt all the time or don't get a lot of exercise all the time. Yep. Uh, this, yeah, it's a similar sort of thing. So you call this a lunge? It's a lunge. Okay. You put one foot out, about that far away from you, you can go a bit closer, a bit further away, it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. Go as far as, the way, as far as the way as you can down to the ground. If you can touch the ground, that's good, without hurting your knees. Mm -hmm. Come back up, put your feet together, take another step. Try to push your knees out rather than let them go in. It's better for your knees. Okay. You can just walk to the end of your driveway and back. Or you can do 20, and then the next day try to do 21. Would you start doing lunges with no weights at all to begin with? Yeah. Especially if you haven't done them before. Yeah, right. Good idea to get the Show us those without the uh, chainsaw on the bucket of dirt. Get your hands up, balance. Nice slippery gravel. Great shoes again. Get your, get your cheap shoes on. Yeah. Oh, this year doing it. Yeah. Lots of things you can do. You can walk up a hill. You can put more dirt in your bucket. You can do them in the same place. Step back. Yep. You can even do backwards runs. Stepping back, going down, and bringing your foot back again. I'd like to point out this is for people that don't have a farm that's got lots of jobs that need to be done. Well, you can do those in the morning, but uh, if you're stuck at home, but in the case of Mikhail, there's a shitload of work around here, which we're going to apply that muscle to. Yeah, hey, I've got a massive leg of pork, and I want to show you how to do slow cooking today. It's very, very basic, but I'm going to show you what to do. That'll do, Bigsy. He wants his posse, um, he's waiting for it. All right, we'll go and uh, turn to that bit of pork. Yep, yeah, Bruno knows what time it is, don't you, Bruno? It's posse yum time. And you know what time it is, don't you, Pixie, eh? Yeah, that's right. Mm hmm. You know what time it is, don't you? Well, just put your blanket back in your box and you pull it back out again. What are we going to do with them, B, eh? You're being very patient, you're being a very good boy. And yes, Poe, we haven't forgotten about you. Good girl, Poe. Good dog, Tucker. Well, I think she's the only chicken left laying, I think. Still getting eggs off her. She's a good chicken. She's in good nick. <coughs> yes, Bigsy, you're going to get fed, mate. Yes, mate, we're going to feed you. Don't worry. I know you can see that chicken and you want to eat it. I want to eat it too, but we need it for eggs right now. Yeah, that's an old chicken too. It must be about seven years old and it's still producing. Well, oh, look who turned up when I'm cutting up the posse, am I? Hey, ducky. Yeah, trying to get a sneaky bit, eh? She can take your posse, young Bruno, is she? Righto, Big Z, it's for you, Big Z, eat up. Not for you, B, Big Z. B, leave it, Big Z. Good boy, Big Z. B. Okay, share. Pay sit. Geez, you couldn't do that this morning, could you? Sit. Get up. Po. You look a bit fat, Po, so I've reduced yours a bit. Eat up. Good girl. You blowing bubbles, Bruno? You blowing bubbles, eh? Yeah. Yeah, mate, I know. Old Bigsy telling B to leave his posse I'm alone. I wouldn't go near him there, uh, B. He's pretty... Pretty uh, ferocious when it comes to his posse yum. Normally I chop it up, but I'm trying just large chunks to see how he eats. Because he's never done it before. And I'm probably going to go back to chopping up because he's a bit fast with it. Some dogs will choke on dog roll, whatever dog roll is. So generally it's advisable to chop it up. Yes, just about to take my whole bloody hand off. That went fast. I <laughs> don't trust this duck, man. I've been bitten more than once and it bloody hurts. 
Yeah. You draw blood, don't you? You have been incredibly patient, Bruno. I've fed everybody, including Ducky. And uh, that's yours. It's a pretty big piece too, isn't it? Eat up. I'm supposed to catch it. So it's all cut up, pre-cut up. But he doesn't scoff us down too fast. He enjoys it though. Loves his posse arm, don't you, mate? Oh yeah. And since he's been feeding this, he stopped limping. I think I told you guys, I had him on Tuck's dog biscuits and that made him absolute, gave him real joint problems. And this stuff is such a good premium dog tucker. Since he's been back on it, he stopped limping, which is just fantastic. And I'm going to book him in, I've talked about it before, to get this big lump removed off the side of him. I wasn't going to because I didn't think he was going to make old bones, but I reckon he's going to get through this winter. Be amazing because he's way past his use by date. He's in his eighth year and these big breeds don't normally go that long, but he's looking strong. And this feed, I put a lot down to this feed. It's a premium dog tucker and he's uh, doing well. But yeah, this thing's got to come off. It's, um, it's getting bigger. I don't know it's causing me any discomfort, but it just looks horrible. And yeah, we'll see what the... They'll probably do an incision, remove it and close the skin back over, I, I imagine. I'm not a surgeon, but that's what I, I, I imagine they do. If you're a vet out there, tell us what do you do with those. Geez, that went pretty fast, Bruno. You get some later on tonight, mate. It actually wasn't for you, ladies. Sorry. That was for my old mate. Who gets seconds because he's a pup. There you go. Eat up. Not for B. Not for B. Good boy, B. Not for B. You've had enough B. Good boy. Pup needs lots. I'm going to teach you how to use a slow cooker. First things I'm going to do is bring it over here. We're just heating this hot plate, smash some butter on the avocado. What we're going to do is we're going to brown this meat before we put it in the slow cooker. Just move it right around. Spread it with your hand, mate. Come back. Spread it. And that's the one. After we've browned this, we're going to cut the joint because we want to put it into this camp oven here. See the size of it? It's not that uh, big. But we'll brown it first. Just gently lower that onto the plate. There we go. That's the one. Okay, we'll give it a uh, short time. You can take that weight. Oh yeah, we'll see how that's looking. It's had about 20 seconds, not much. It's already starting to brown it off. So we're going to take this joint here and cut it from here. So we can turn the whole lot over. And from there as well. And it should fit now into the... Yeah, like that there. Take it a bit. Try to see how it's going to fit in the camp oven. Oh, she's going to be a squash. Can you get it in? Just look at that. Yep, sweet. Lift up, straight up. Just go straight up and away. It's on there. We're going to put a bit of uh, just a little bit of chilli over it. And give it heaps. Cool. We're going to leave this for about oh, four or five hours, real slow. Pop the lid on, mate, and we'll come back to it. We'll check it periodically. We'll have that flame down pretty low. Might drop it down a bit more. Sit down, Bixie. So, my ferns that I planted are doing really well. They've done good, but I've got to trim all these. Uh, I think it's poison ivy? No, I don't know what that is. Someone tell me what that there is. It's string, and then we're going to get in there and chop that. Oh, Pace, get off there. It's doing better than you jumped over, you little wanker. Bloody hell. Anyway, they're doing pretty good. As you can see, they're thriving, which is great. Right by the Kale's house truck, his home. And over here, down the scrub, we've got these grapes growing, which uh, oh, I didn't harvest this year because they tasted like shite. There's a few that have turned into sort of like raisins on the vine. They just weren't very good. But I've got a potato patch down here that I grew for my children. And being on a ketogenic diet, I don't eat potatoes, of course, but um, there should still be some down here. If I can harvest for Mikhail, I want to get some nice potatoes out of here for him. There's my patch. I was getting all excited because I thought I was going to find a heap, but I'm not actually finding that many at all. Don't you take them, mate. You know, I've raided most of it for my children. 
Is that one? Yep. Let's go for it. Not for you. Leave it. This was my protection and it did work to some degree. Here's one. These are for Mikhail. Yeah, we'll bite them. Yeah, not as many as I was hoping, but... Yeah, here we go. really good dirt because all the leaf litter that's broken down on here has uh, broken down over the years. Oh, there's a nice one. That's a good one. You're not making it easy, mate. You're definitely not making it easy at all. I think it's a game. Oh, don't you take that. We're getting a few there to feed. Pretty good. I think we've done our dash. It's uh, more than I was actually expecting, to be honest. There's probably a few more there hiding, but uh, I'd say it's the last lot we're going to get. Yep. Yeah, that's it. for ages more might find one more small one but not really much there okay that'll do Bruno that's what we got it's a feed for Mikhail oh it's looking good mate real clean nice yeah hey look look what I got nice they're not real big but they'll be they'll be sweet Potatoes. Check this out. The fucking rats have chewed that whole brush. That's rubbish. We're going to tear this whole kitchen out because it's really not hygienic with rats all over. We're going to wipe and wipe and wipe and then wipe again before we do anything. There's our dry foods hanging up there. I've got brown rice. Pasta, stuff I can use for the kale, but yep, it's out of the way of the rats up there. These are, these are the best ones. That'll do there, Big C, calm down. Sparking is the broom being used out there. The most nutritional part of a potato is where? Who can tell me? Anybody know? Aha, you're right. It's the skin. That's why we don't peel potatoes in this house. There's a lot of vitamin C in the skin. In fact, there's all sorts of good stuff in it. And the rest is just carbohydrate. It very quickly turns to sugar in your system. You can burn it for a fuel, but the real goodness is in the skin of the potato. So that's why wedges are really good for you. Depending on what you're cooking them into, of course, if you're doing them with something like uh, vegetable oil, that's not good. Down. Good boy. So for doing chips, the best you can use is actually dark fat. We haven't got any dark fat, so it's butter. What you doing, Bruno, hey? What you doing? It's been going for about four and a half hours. Hello, Pace. I can see you guys out there. Oh, oh, that looks good. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? I bet you would. Right, let's give it the old knife trick. Putting the caping knife in there. What we want is, oh, you can tell. I was going to say, if clear fluid comes out, it's good, but that is done like a dog's dinner. I don't know what you think you're going to get, Pace, but if it's food, the answer is no. Right, in the pan. These are our wedges. Gonna turn that off, that is done. Just let that sit for a while. Over there. Just gonna put a few chili flakes over it just to give it a bit of heat. The cow likes spicy stuff. Bit of salt for pan. Well, I think those potatoes should be absolutely bloody delicious. God I wish I could eat them. 
Jeez. We've got one lemon on our tree that we bought. One yellow lemon and the rest are green. So we're going to have that with our meal right now for the dressing for the salad. That one's just got flowers. And this one, sweet as bro. Hey, Mikhail, yeah. your dinner's ready, mate. I have made you the most tasty, delicious chips that you will just die for, eh? It almost makes me want to break my keto diet. I just got some bad news. One of my very good mates just been diagnosed with cancer. You know who you are, mate. And, uh... I'm thinking about you. Right, we'll turn to dinner. I made them special for you. Ooh. What do you reckon, eh? Yeah, that Do you want to test one? Tell me what it's like? Yeah. Pretty hot, eh? Yeah. It's a good chopping and chewing, though. Give it a swing. How's that? Mmm, mmm, mmm. Homegrown potatoes. Right, I'm going to teach you something new today. So, what did I teach you yesterday how to do? Um, we are processing fish yesterday. What else did I teach uh, you though? Onions. How to cut up an onion. Today it's how to cut up one of those suckers. There you go. Grab it. On the board. Let's do it. If you are juicing in one of these, then it's this way here. The problem with that is you get pips everywhere. Okay. If you're doing it straight squeeze, it's that way for the lemon. That's the first part. Second part is you remove this middle section like that. Okay, that comes out. Then you can, well, you can still use this to just save that juice. Get our pips out. But we shouldn't get much. And the same again, this one here. Okay, so, down like that there. And what that means is that you can squeeze that and you've got no, no pips going in, like that there. Okay? Yeah. Or you can get your two hands on it like this. And the other thing is, it doesn't squirt into your eyes. You can get your nice, well, not so badly. Okay, that's the best way. And if you're serving a meal with a piece of lemon for somebody that wants to you know, put on their fish, they've got this so they can just squirt and control it over the piece of fish, like that, without it going all out here. Perfect. You'll get the odd bit because it's made up of uh, juice inside, you know, little pockets, so you can burst them, but overall, it's an easy way to control it. Right, that's going to be for our salad. How good are your tossing skills? I reckon I can throw it about 50 metres. Righto, keep tossing, bud. On fingers, get it put out. Juice, keep tossing. That's the one, keep going. Nice, nice. One whole lemon. It's actually a very high MCT oil. Very good for you. Keep going, bud. Keep tossing, otherwise it's not any... Oh, that's the one. Salad, potatoes, and what's in here, mate? That is slowly roasted duck that we roasted all day today. Duck? Not duck, um, goat. <laughs> Man, you're not with it. I got some news for you. I shouldn't be laughing at you because it's actually a fucking pig. I thought it was goat, but actually, when I smelled it, it was actually, yeah, uh, it's pig. <laughs> so, I can't laugh at you, but duck, it's going to be duck. <laughs> I don't know about you, man. There was a blank there, so I must have somehow known that it was not what it was. <laughs> What it was supposed to be, and because of that, oh, come on, come on, <laughs> come on, it was a good, good story. What do you reckon, guys? So, all of that potatoes are all yours, but I'm gonna break my this is gonna be the only little bit I'm gonna have just to taste it. So, I'm gonna throw me out just to see what it's like. <laughs> First potato I've had in like a year and a half. God damn, that's good, man, that's good. Nah, that do it, be strong. Tear into it, bro. Oh, look at this. This is pork, wild pork, home. Woo! Look at that. Pork here, bro. Yeah. Go give you heaps. 
Okay, because you're going to eat. We're going to have this tomorrow cold too. Oh. Mm. Mm. Right. I don't even remember actually killing this pig. I don't know which one it was, but sometime. Oh, shit. Best meal in 24 hours. You know, it's good to be good. Cooked to perfection. Oh, got my hat on. Really bastard. <laughs> Put on Harold. No, that didn't work. Oh, this is so good, man. Bruno's outside, like he knows it's meat going on. He's like hanging around. Mm. That makes me want to hunt, eh? Hey? Mmm. 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 Yum. How are you? Salt's gone. Mmm. 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 I did see a video for the day. The second video for the day. Hope you enjoyed it. Good luck with your own cooking and homesteading if you are homesteading, because we are now as much as we can. And be good. Can't be good then. Be like uh, the kale. So he's always careful. See you later.